going on? I'm sitting at the top of Roxanne Mountain out of Medford, Oregon. This view's pretty cool up here. Uh, it's where I come to kind of, you know, kind of center myself. <clears throat> Not to mention it's a really good challenge of a climb. Uh, I tried to run it this morning and uh, I got outran by a by a girl. <laughs> she was something else, man. Um, solid rock. The chick was pretty awesome. It's a cool spot. Let me show you down here real quick. I don't know if you can see it, but you're at like 35 or 3,700 feet. Sitting above the clouds right now. It's an amazing feeling. <clears throat> Sit down right here for a minute. I'll tell you a quick story <clears throat> about uh, about an event that kind of changed my my life. And I know that seems really dramatic, you know, um, to start out to this early in the morning with but it was sixth grade and I had moved from um, Bell Gardens California down in the LA area to uh, to Medford Oregon and I'd been here I had to be here for that year you know while my dad handled some stuff down south and so I started out staying with my aunt and ended up staying uh, with my mom you know, soon after she moved up here, and um, the plan was I was always going to go back to LA. Um, so of course, you know, um, moving to a different city, you have to transfer schools and and whatever else. And you know, sixth grade, it can be a little bit rough on kids. Um, I was from Los Angeles; they got a different way of doing things down there. There's a different code in the schools and on the streets and you know there's a different feel and mentality um, to the kids and the whole atmosphere um, in, in bigger cities than there is to you know a place like this I mean uh, look around you know this is this is where I moved to it's crazy and so I got to this school and immediately was an outcast um, nobody knew me, you know, all these kids had kind of grown up together and knew each other since kindergarten and I was a new kid. I was going to a really small school um, outside of Eagle Point, Oregon and um, and it was just complete shell shock for me. Um, I just kept my mouth shut, put my head down and trudged through it, you know. Uh, but some of the kids, you know, didn't really care for me. Um, I didn't really care for them either, you know, <laughs> so I guess it was a, it was a, it was a give and take kind of relationship, but, uh, there was this one kid in particular, and, you know, I don't remember his name right off the bat, but I remember him being pretty equally yoked in strength, um, to me, and, and he was quick-witted, smart kid, um, good at everything he did, and, you know, within the first couple months of me being at this new school, it was really apparent that him and I um, were in competition over everything. Um, everything from, you know, the girls to homework assignments, um, football games, and PE. I mean, everything. It was like we had this rivalry going on. And that sounds crazy for, you know, sixth grade kids to have such a, a, deep, a deep rivalry. But we really did. Um, and one day on the... On the, on the football field, we were playing flag football, and it turned into tackle. This kid hit me, and uh, hit me pretty good. You know, I hit the dirt, got up, shook it off, and and I vowed he was going to pay for that one. You know, I was going to collect payback on that one. Um, it ended up being a, a, turning into a, a brief fight, 
and um, it was broken up by the teachers and we explained you know the problem the situation we had been having and they fully knew it like every it was a really small school and everybody knew the tensions and stuff that was going on you know with me and the other kids and stuff and and so they they uh they suggested you know that we not fight because we would obviously get suspended and possibly expelled and kicked out of school forever um so they suggested we do an arm wrestling match you know it would be a, an easy way to settle our differences or whatever else and to our young minds you know it made perfect sense um so we set it up you know the next week the following friday we were going to arm wrestle he's going to have a a week to train for it you know well, that Friday comes around, and um, all morning, you know, he's going to arm wrestle at lunch. So all morning, we're just ramped up, um, ready for blood, you know. I'm just trying to, just trying to focus on crushing this dude, and he was, I'm sure he was doing the same. Well, lunchtime rolls around, and we go outside to the school quad area, sit down, lock arms on this picnic bench and get busy and uh, we had base we, we pretty much had a, a base crowd at that point of probably about 20 kids you know they were all anxious to see who was going to come out on top um, man we went at it and our, it seems like I was given everything I had he was given everything he had and our arms didn't move you know we were just really equal in strength and uh I was a pretty strong kid, and and I knew it, you know, because all of my friends that I've ever grown up with and stuff, I could pretty much um, handle them on the arm wrestling table, and this kid was just not budging. He wasn't going anywhere, and I loved it, you know. At first, it was it was great because um, it just gave me that much more determination to try to crush him, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> you wouldn't believe it, but man, we arm wrestled for probably a good 20 minutes before we really started to feel it you know um, and I started looking for signs in this kid's face if he was gonna give up I mean our our arms would we would we maybe would vary you know one side or the other um, maybe just a, a I don't know eight inches or so but other than that we weren't going anywhere and you know to make a, a real long drawn-out match short it lasted 30, 30 plus minutes. The bell had rang. And at that point, you know, we had teachers around us. We had the entire sixth grade class surrounding that table. And, it, you know, it was funny. One thing that happened was while we were arm wrestling, and I don't know if this happened for him, but it definitely happened for me. While we were arm wrestling, I could hear all the cheers. You know, some of the kids liked me and some of the kids were cheering for me. And then... Of course, he had a whole section of, you know, people rooting for him on. But uh, I could hear their cheers and I could hear their screams and I could I could hear their na the names they were calling and stuff. And about 24, you know, 20 or so minutes into it, it um, those screams, they just turned to random noise. And I couldn't, I was trying so hard, I was so focused, I was giving it everything I had. I couldn't make out what they were saying anymore. Um, it just sounded like just random noise. And it went from that to dead silence. And I don't know, man, I've never had that experience ever since. Um, they were still cheering. But I couldn't hear a single thing. I was literally dumping everything, excuse me, everything I had um, into this, into the last few minutes of this arm wrestling match. And it was completely silent. And I remember looking up to this point, you know, we were going strong. And I remember looking up, looking for signs of um, fatigue on this dude's face. I wanted to know if he was going to quit. Um, I was getting tired, you know. I didn't see any signs. I mean, he was he was a rock. I seen no signs whatsoever that he was going to give up. Um, he had this look of just anger, and he was just fired up, you know. And and I, uh, it was at that second, that very moment, 
that I had the first doubt in my mind about being able to beat them. And I didn't know then that it was going to be such a life-altering event. But that first doubt snowballed. And it became another doubt. And within, I'd say within five minutes, you know, the bell had already rang. The, the late bell for class had already rang. The teachers weren't, you know, they weren't trying to break us up to get us back into class. This thing was going to get settled once and for all. And they knew we were going to fight if, if nothing else. So this was the best way to handle it. But within that, fir but within that five minutes of that first doubt, I, I, my whole internal fortitude was like collapsing. And, and, uh, I, I came to a point, I just, I just relaxed my arm and, uh, he pinned it and I got up off the table and I felt so defeated. I mean, I felt crushed. It's hard to imagine how a, how a sixth grade kid could feel so crushed. You know, but I was beaten, and um, it didn't feel good at all. We started to walk back into class, and my head was hung pretty low. And I, I just, I, I hated, I hated every moment that you know that was ticking by. And this kid, he said, um, "I'll never forget this." This kid, he said, "Man, I'm glad you quit when you did, because I was just about to." can't tell you the impact that has on me to know that I gave up right before just seconds maybe before he did I never got to rearm wrestle him I never got a rematch and um, and I had to live you know with myself that I gave, I quit first I gave up first and, you know, a person of my character, and there's many of you out there like just like me. You know, you can try to hide it and stuff. We all know who you are. It's hard on us. It's hard on us, you know. And it's not because we want to be better than you or we think we're better than you. It's not that at all, man. It's we want to be the best we can be. Um... the best, you know, and, and I knew that, I mean, immediately following this arm wrestling match, I asked myself, could you have went another couple seconds? Could you have went another minute? And I know the answer to that question. And it killed me to know that the answer was yes. I really could have. Yeah, I was giving it all I had, but I had a little bit more. And it kind of, it kind of breaks me up, you know, not, not because, um, not because of, you know, the event itself, but because it's such a huge life story. It's such a huge, well, not a life story. It's such a huge part of my life story. Um, and I think that's, you know, a, a major reason as to, <coughs> excuse me. As to why I've become kind of the person I am today and, and the things that I reach for. And they all seem, you know, extravagant and, you know, way out of reach. And everybody asks me, you know, why, why don't you just get a 9 to 5, Rich? And, you know, why, why do you do these crazy things? Why do you swim in the ocean? And why do you yada, yada, yada? You know, the list is long, the questions I get. That's part of the reason why is that one arm wrestling match. And it kind of it's kind it kind of shaped who I was gonna be. So I've never told that story publicly before, and you know I've taught a lot of classes and I've been around a lot of people in my life um, where that story was definitely able to come out. I just. I couldn't muster the strength to say that I quit. You know, I, I, 
I quit. Um, so I don't know if that does anything for you. And, and I, you know, I don't know if it's going to help anybody out there or something, but, um, my biggest thing that I want to say right now, I mean, from this vantage point where I'm at today, right way up here on the top of this mountain with the clouds underneath me, don't quit, man. I mean, with everything you've got, pour it, pour it into what you do, you know, be you. Be you and give it everything you've got. Um, you know you've got you've got one shot, and uh, you got to make it count. Like I said, there was a there was a girl running this mountain this morning, and um, she beat me up this thing. I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, she was a solid rock. <coughs> uh, I don't care who you are, male, female, it doesn't matter. You know, be the best you can be and and, and make no apologies for it. Um, you can be certain that I'm going to be hunting this girl down. I'm going to be trying to train with her. I want to I wanna be as good as her and better. <laughs> but if my point is this, learn all you can along the way and be the best you can along the way. Go as hard as you can along the way. And don't give in and don't give up and don't make excuses for yourself. And don't feel like you have to explain to anybody else why you are the way you are. Do you, man. And do it to the best of your ability. You know? Because I'll tell you what. You give it all you got. Everything you've got. And you'll be sitting on top. I gotta go finish this run. I got I gotta run to the bottom. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs>